don't eat avocados from Chile, don't eat asparagus which has been flown in from Brazil. Put the auxiliary on the hydraulics. Uh, John Deere link which I've just downloaded on my phone. Welcome to Feeding the Fodder Beat. So behind me here I've got the John Deere with the front loader on and here is the Fodder Beat bucket which we used to feed with the JCB last year but we had the brackets on it changed so that we can feed out with the front loader here. So if you just have a look we've got the Euro brackets on it and we've also as well got the Euro cup links on there. So I'm just going to pick it up with the front loader this morning, scoop up a bucket full of Fodder Beat which is the sugary goodness which was harvested only a few months ago and just down below here this is the fodder beet so this is going to go into the bucket there's an auger inside there which then churns the fodder beet to the other side uh, hopefully you can just see and then we've got a couple of rollers on the end which crush the fodder beet making it edible for the cattle And there we go, I've filled up a bucket there of fodder beet so I can now go and feed this to the cattle on the farm. Just get into the shed. <laughs> Sorry, just put the lights on so you guys can see a bit better. And then on the joystick on the left hand side, on the right hand side here, I can just control the bucket. I'll slow my speed down to about three, two and a half kilometers an hour. Put the auxiliary on for the hydraulics. Increase the revs. There we go, that's how quickly we can feed the cattle. Okay, so sadly my battery just died there in the shed, so I've just fed the cattle. This afternoon I thought I'd show you guys how we take the front loader on and off. It's going to be quite handy whipping off the loader and then being able to hook up to the livestock trailer to go and cart the cattle. So there's a little bit of a, a, a procedure you've got to do if you want to take this front loader off and I'm going to show you guys. So I've only really learned how to do this myself quite recently, so it's going to be a bit of fun just, to, just showing you guys how I do it. This is always the difficult part, is actually getting it perfectly straight so that when you reattach, everything is, everything is hunkadory. Right, so, down the front loader goes. And I'm just gonna make sure that it lines up with the end of the dozer blade on this 360 digger. And we're gonna take down these stands here. So they're the stands which are going to hold the front loader up when we take it off, when we disconnect the machine. So the next job is we've got to release the pressure for the hydraulics for the front loader. The way we do that is literally just to turn the tractor off, release the pressure and then we can disconnect the hydraulics. We can just put them, I've just rested them in that little bracket just there and then I'm just going to close the lid, shut the little lever down, it's now locked in and then we can begin the disconnection process. So quite simple, pull the lever down to unlock it and then we just push that little indent there, pull it down, oh, there we go, and you can see that the little black lock in there has now gone forwards. So all we've got to do now is just reverse. And there we go, just like that, that's the tractor disconnected from the front loader. I think it looks quite smart actually without the, uh, without the front loader, I think it looks better. 
yeah now you've got a tractor to go and do all of your jobs all of your tasks carting road work any land work and you've still got the front loader there which you can put on to go and do the livestock duties so yeah pretty cool and as you guys know soon we're going to have the front pto put in by ripon farm services front pto and some hydraulic spools to operate the machio buffalo on the front which is going to be super super handy and yeah here she is so i'm just going to take her into the yard because i've got to wash the um I've got to clean the rest of the windscreen off uh, and I'm also as well going to polish the bonnet because that was uh, a job I was going to do. Uh, but yeah, having the front loader in the way it makes it quite difficult sometimes to clean and polish the bonnet because it's been getting pretty mucky up there. Hopefully you guys can see it's not well, it's not overly clean at the moment but yeah, I'll, do, I'll go and polish that. Something else I did as well was I just put a bit of grease in these brackets here just for when the, for when the loader goes on and off. And I have noticed that it does actually really help in just sliding the loader on when you reconnect it. So yeah, that's just quite a neat trick to just drop a bit of grease in Let's see, loader slide onto the brackets a lot easier. Hopefully it's going to last us quite a long time. If you look after them, especially with the John Deere, it should look after you as well. So uh, you can't really go too wrong. Something else with this 155 is it's got telematics, so it can actually speak to local John Deere dealership, Ben Burgess. Uh, and it can also speak to Ripon as well. So the technicians will know if there's anything wrong with this tractor, if I link it up with John Deere, uh, John Deere Link, which I've just downloaded on my phone. So I've just downloaded it here. So if anything goes wrong, they'll have full access to the tractor, all of the diagnostics codes, whether there's anything up with it or not, it's just loading the screen. Um, but it's, it's really interesting actually, learning about how this is all uh, interlinking now into these newer tractors. Um, so there's the John Deere sign-in page. I can just log in, use the serial number to get the tractor set up on John Deere Link. And then, yeah, like I said, any problems with the tractor, it can be sorted out by Ben Burgess. They can also work out if there's a part which is broken and then they'll send a mechanic around or a technician around with the correct part, which is quite interesting rather than the other way around with an older tractor they would have to just guess by by uh, getting on with the job but with this john deere can constantly monitor it they'll know if something's wrong which is which is which is pretty cool to be fair it's going to be hopefully quite efficient having someone coming around to fix it and knowing exactly what's wrong with it so it's something new it's something different with this technology and i think those who can adopt it will reap the benefits so a little bit of a clean just on the windows just so that we can see through the glass in the winter time here with the front loader. Okay, so I'm now just gonna head over, hop on the front loader again, because tomorrow morning we're gonna be feeding those cows. So all I've gotta do is literally drive next to the front loader, pop into this essentially parking space <laughs> that I've kind of made for myself. You want to be really straight and you have gotta be so careful not to knock the bonnet on the sides. You don't wanna damage the bonnet. Oh, gotta be good. And also you need to come in really straight as well. That's not straight enough. Okay, here we go, guys. I just drive in now. And we need to have a bit of force. So we get locked in. And there we go. We're now hooked in on both sides so I can just lift the loader up in the air. Lift up the stands. And we know it's locked in because on these little holes here you've just got the front loader clicking mechanism hopefully you can just see it there and that is the indicator to know that it's locked in and there we go guys one front loader back on the tractor and then a little scoop up of food for the cattle for the morning I'm just watching the sun go down here. I've just got Clover and the two collies. I was just running them out with the can -am here. Hopefully you can just see on the right. And I'm just watching the sun go down. I've just let them out the back and they've run off into the maize field. You coming guys? <laughs> there they all are. So hopefully you enjoyed today just feeding out the fodder beak to the cattle and taking the front loader on and off. It's quite handy having the option to take the loader off. It's going to be great when we're carting the cattle in springtime out to the pasture. We can take the front loader off, transport them with the cattle float and then we can always put the front loader on back later on. Also as well in the upcoming next few months there is hopefully going to be a Manitou arriving on the farm so that is going to be really handy working with the John Deere as well. We can leave the front, leave the front loader off sometimes which will be quite nice having the handler around, a little tally handler um, as, you, as a lot of you guys know from um, the Llama show and also the Tanko wrapper will be coming in the future and also as well we'll be looking at some future silage equipment which is going to be really really exciting. Now this field
field I was on, I'm on here, is actually the field I was thinking about the free range chickens. There's been a little bit of an issue with the free range chickens because just over there is the Hardly Flood and the Hardly Flood is an MVZ or a nitrogen vulnerable zone or, or I believe it's called an NSSI as well is another term, type of terminology for it and what it means is essentially if there's any nitrogen produced on this field here it could then potentially be able to run into the NSSI or the NVZ uh, whatever we want to call it and if it runs into there basically we'll get into trouble with the environment agencies and lots of other organizations who we don't want to upset so we would rather find another alternative solution to the free range chicken so that's why uh, the free range chicken plan has, has been on hold is because of this issue with the nitrogen vulnerable zone so although it was a nice idea i'm not saying i'm going to stop ha having to think about the free range chickens but i just think it's going to be on hold for some time because of this issue with the nssi and the nitrogen vulnerable zones you've got to be really careful in farming nowadays that you don't pollute any rivers or you don't pollute any waters uh, with the wrong materials liquids for example uh, but ultimately um, as farmers nowadays we do want to look after the environment we don't want to damage the environment it's something which you know a lot of farmers now especially in the uk do care about quite a bit is the environment so believe it or not we're not all that bad as farmers we're not out to go and damage the environment and to ruin habitats and eradicate species a lot of the media a lot of the news right now i don't think it's showing the right image of farming i think it's showing farming in quite a bad light which is quite sad but generally speaking farmers they've got the best interests of the environment at heart and the best interests of, of nature really and i mean a lot of people in the city i've noticed they're quick to criticize farmers they're quick to criticize what we're doing but ultimately we're producing a product out here for the consumer the people who are living in the cities and if it wasn't for the people in the cities we wouldn't be doing a lot of this intensive farming which we're doing it would probably be a more organic lifestyle it would be lower input um, less damaging farming um, but we're only here to supply the consumers if they reduce their carbon footprint by uh, improving their eating habits eating food which is in season it would make a huge difference and that's something i think people really need to just be aware of don't eat avocados from chile don't eat asparagus which has been flown in from brazil try and eat produce which has been grown in the uk when it's in season and you'll also notice that it will taste a lot better as well so thank you very much for watching guys do subscribe do tap that little bell and i'll catch you on the next one cheers